Hello, hello. 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 Hi guys, good evening. Thank you for joining the live stream. Again, uh, sort of a long gap. And today we are going to start a new book. Again by Sir John Woodruff slash Arthur Avalon. The uh, Calcutta High Court uh, uh, judge from the British era who became a Tantra Sadhaka out of the blue. Because one day when he was listening to a case, he could not concentrate. And he suspected something and asked some of the uh, security guards at the uh, court to uh, check out what's going on outside. And there when that security guard went outside and he saw that a sadhu was doing some yagya. So he asked him to bring him in and asked him what's, what's going on, uh, what are you doing? And he said that, uh, he admitted that, he confessed that. I'm specifically doing a yagya here to distract you from your case so that <laughs> so that my my basically the guy who hired that sadhu uh, to do the puja wins the case and the judge uh, l does not uh, give his full attention to the case good morning bolo monday hoye gach ha so uh, this is not the principles of tantra shastra which is his more famous book and his complete treatise on tantra uh, I am not buying that yet because it's insanely costly. So this is his first book basically. This is a, an even briefer uh, gist of uh, Tantra Shastra. So it's just an introduction to Tantra Shastra and uh, the other one is specifically called Principles of Tantra Shastra. This is a very short book. I hope to finish it very soon in the live streams. And I have not read it at all. There's no preface. I actually don't like reading prefaces all this much these days. Uh, because the contents of the books I'm buying are so fascinating, it's uh, I, I get impatient reading the introduction and prefaces. So this starts with an interesting chapter. The first chapter itself is called Mount Kailasa. Dada, uh, do read the paper Symbolism in Hinduism. The uh, symbolism in the Vedas is just outstanding and much underestimated aspect of the Vedas. Uh, okay, who is it by? Who wrote it? Let me turn the chat into live chat. What do you think about Narayan Murthy's 70 hour thing? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's inevitable. That's what's going to happen. That's what will ha have to happen. Every every country that has succeeded at any point has worked their asses off in that in that same way. Even if Narayan Murthy didn't say it outright, it would have to happen anyway. And most people are most corporate offices are already running that way. And see, w when startups uh, happen, startups usually function that way: seventy hour, eighty hour work weeks only. So and most of our companies in India today are startups. So they are absolutely going to have to have to uh, work 70 hours and the, the companies which are big enough since they are going to now trade in get into different waters, different countries and going to grow their companies exponentially. So they are kind of a startup uh, startup in, in one sense that they will they will have a fresh start to everything. So everyone in the country, entire country, no matter which field they are, has to work 70 hours and also be disciplined enough to also have a family and have kids not not watch IPL all day so the uh, that uh, bar hopping uh, club hopping uh, Bengaluru people uh, most of whom are either going to die at 42 or are going to have an insanely uh, mad life and they're going to quit their jobs because m m people are going to be insanely prosperous as well so and they'll maybe they'll have a retired life in Auroville and do yoga all day uh, but most of us are not going to do that we will have to work a lot so let's start Mount Kailasa the scene of the revelation of Mahanirvana Tantra is laid in Himalaya, the abode of snow. A holy land weighted with the traditions of the Aryan race. <laughs> Here in these lofty uplands, encircled with everlasting snows, rose the great mountain of the north, the Saptakula Parvata. Hence the race itself came and there its early legends have their setting. There are still shown at Bhimudiyar the caves where the sons of Pandu and Draupadi rested as did Rama and his faithful wife at the point where the Kosi joins the Sita in the grove of Ashoka trees. In these mountains, Munis and Rishis lived. Here also is the Kshetra of Shiva Mahadeva, where his spouse Parvati, the daughter of the mountain king, Parvat, was born, and where Mother Ganges also has her source. From time immemorial, pilgrims have toiled through these mountains to visit the three great shrines at Gangotri, Kedarnath and Badrinath. At Kangri, further north, the pilgrims make Parikrama of Mount Kailasha or Kangri Mpoche, 
where Shiva is said to dwell. This nobly towering peak rises to the northwest of the sacred Manasarovar Lake, or also known as Mafam Yumso, from amidst the purple ranges of the lower Kangri Mountains. The paradise of Shiva is a summer land of both lasting sunshine and cool shade, musical with the song of birds and bright with undying flowers. The air scented with the sweet fragrance of Mandhara chaplets resounds with the music and song of celestial singers and players. The mount is Ganaparvata, thronged with, with trains of spirits or Deva Yoni, of which the opening chapter of Mahanirvana Tantra speaks. And for those of you, you who have watched our last day's live stream, we out of the blue suddenly found out that Raja Ram Mohan Roy, out of all people, was a great believer and follower of Mahanirvana Tantra. And apparently, uh, uh, the person who wrote the testimonial for uh, the book we were discussing, uh, Shakti and Shakta, it was a Bengali person. He was saying that uh, uh, Brahmo Samaj, the movement was basically misappropriated by his followers and other people who came later. But Raja Ram Mohan Roy was a very devout Mahanirvana Tantra follower. And in the regions beyond rises Mount Meru, center of the world lotus. Its heights people with peopled with spirits, so which means populated with spirits, are hung with clusters of stars as with wreaths of malati flowers. In short, it is written, quote, He who thinks of Himachala, though he should not behold him, is greater than he who performs all worship in Kasi. In a hundred ages of the Devas, I could not tell thee of the glories of Himachala. As the dew is dried up by the morning sun, so are the sins of mankind dried up by the sight of Himachala. Okay, this is from Skanda Puran. It is not, however, necessary to go to the Himalayan Kailasha to find Shiva. He dwells wheresoever his worshippers versed in Kula Tattva abide, and his mystic mount is to be sought in the thousand-petaled lotus, Sahasra, Sahasrara Padma, in the body of every human jiva, hence called Sivasthana, to which all wheresoever situate may repair when they have learned how to achieve the way either. Shiva promulgates his teaching in the world below in the works known as Yamala, Yamal, Damar, uh, Shiva Sutra, and in the Tantras, which exist in the form of dialogues between Devata and his Shakti, the Devi in her form as Parvati. According to the Gayatri Tantra, the Deva Ganesha first preached the Tantra to the Deva Yoni on Mount Kailasa, after he had himself received them from the mouth, mouth of Shiva. After a description of the mountain, the dialogue opens with a question from Parvati, in answer to which, and those which succeed it, Shiva unfolds his doctrine on the subjects with which Mahanirvana Tantra deals. This is the end of the first chapter. Small cha chapter. Next chapter is called Shiva and Shakti. Great. Uh, let me check some comments a little. That is draining. Productivity does not uh, go up by increasing work hours. Health goes down. Yes, the problem is for most people, uh, if, if they work uh, 60 hours and 55 hours or 50 hours instead of 70, they are going to spend that rest of the time watching Netflix and uh, eating f uh, fast food and going to the bar. So what health are they going to take care of anyway? Uh, if you cannot do that, don't even think of being business-minded economy. Uh, sir, father of Hindutva, Chandranath Boshu, wanted Tantra to grow in Hindu society. Why? I don't know. Maybe he thought it makes people more courageous, fierce, and bold, and brave. And salary is not, not going up significantly with work hours. It will. It will. That comment was not for people who are looking for a job and a salary. Joy Bangla and Shubhavi Jaya. Shubhavi Jaya. Sri Rampur, I Raja Ramon Raya, Matri Kuler, Araisho Bachar, Beshi Purano, Tantra, Tantra, Durgar Pujo Hai. I see. My disappointment with uh, Murti ji is that uh, most people are already working 70 hours in white collar jobs. That is true. It's only useless government jobs where people can work for less. They are also less productive. Yes. Yes, that's what. See, anyone who argues for lesser working hours, what, what healthy life, lifestyle are government officers taking? They are, they are having a casual, relaxed life. Dhamar is Dhamar. Okay. Yeah, Taranath Tantri keeps Rudra Dhamar, I see. I agree with Murthy's idea that young people should work at least 70 hours. Shiva and Shakti. That eternal 
immutable existence which transcends the turiya and all other states in the unconditioned absolute the supreme brahman or para brahman without prakriti nishkala or her ap- attributes nirguna which as being the inner self and knowing subject can never be the object of cognition y- you can't basically conceptualize it and is to be apprehended only through yoga by the realization of the self atma gyana which it is because as it is said quote spirit can alone know spirit and quote being beyond mind speech and without name the brahman was called tat that and then tat sat that which is for the sun moon and stars and all visible things what are they but a glimpse of light caught from that which is tat brahman is both nishkala and sakala kala is prakriti the nishkala brahman or para brahman is the tat when thought of as without prakriti or prakrite uh, prakrite ranya it is called sakala when with prakriti as the substance of prakriti is the three gunas it is then saguna as in the previous state it was nirguna though in the latter state it is thought of as without shakti yet making accommodation to human speech in in it it with capital i yet in it potentially exists exists shakti its power and the whole universe produced by it to say however that the shakti exists in the brahman is but a form of speech since it and shakti are in fact one and shakti is eternal anadi rupa she is brahma rupa and both viguna that is nirguna and saguna the chat the the chaitanya rupini devi who manifests all bhuta she is ananda rupini devi by whom the brahman manifests itself and who to use the words of the sharada pervades the universe as does oil the sesamum seed uh, a footnote is given kubjika tantra first patala okay so that's where this is this uh, uh, sharada is from in the beginning of the nishkala brahman uh, in the beginning the Nis- the nishkala brahman alone existed in the beginning there was the one it willed and became many aham bahusyam may i may i be many in such manifestation of shakti the brahman is known as the lower or apara or manifested brahman who as the subject of worship is meditated upon with attributes and in fact to the mind and sense of the embodied spirit or jiva the brahman has body and form it is embodied in the forms of all devas and devis and in the worshipper himself its form is that of the universe and of all thing things and beings therein as shruti says he saw sa aiksata aham bahusyam uh, prajayeya he thought to himself may i be many sa aiksata was itself a manifest manifestation of shakti that's where the word shakti comes from i guess the the parama purva nirvana shakti of brahman as shakti okay from the brahman with shakti uh, prahakti prahakti maya issued nada shiva shakti as the word or sound and from nada bindu appeared kali charana in his commentary on the uh, shat chakra nirupana says that shiva and nirvana shakti bound by a maik bond and covering should be thought of as existing in the form of param bindu the sharada says sachidananda vibhavat sakalat uh sakalat parameshwarat asichak asichak tistato asichak asichak tistato nado nadad bindu samudbhava from parameshwara vested with the wealth of sachidananda and with prakriti that is sakala issued shakti from shakti came nada and from nada was born bindu the state of subtle body which is known as kamaka kamakala is the mula of mantra the term mula mantra mantratmika when applied to the devi refers to this subtle body of hers known as the kamakala the tantra also speaks of three bindus namely shiva maya shakti maya and shiva shakti maya the param bindu is represented as a circle the center of which is the brahmapada or place of brahman wherein are prakriti purusha the circumference of which is encircling maya 
it is on the crescent of nirvana kala the 17th which is again in that of amakala the 16th digit referred to in the text of the moon circle or chandra mandala which circle is situated above the sun circle surya mandala the guru and the hamsa which are in the pericarp of the thousand petaled lotus uh, sah sahara padrana next to the bindu is the fiery bodhini or nibodhika the bindu which the with the uh, nirvana kala nibodhika and amakala are situated in the lightning like lightning like inverted triangle known as akatha and which is so called because at, at its apex is a at its right base is ka and at its left base is tha it is made up of 48 letters matrika the 16 vowels running from a to ka 16 consonants of the ka varga and other groups running from ka to tha and the remaining 16 from tha to a inside are the remaining letters matrika h l second and k as the as the substance of devi is matrika matrika mai the triangle represents the word of all that exists the triangle is itself encircled by the chandra mandala the bindu is symbolically described as being like a grain of gram of gram gram kanaka which under its encircling sheath contains a divided seed this param bindu is prakriti purusha shiva shakti it is known as the shabda brahman the sound of uh, sound brahman or apara brahman a polarization of the two shiva shakti tatvas then takes place in para shakti maya the devi becomes unmukhi her face turns towards shiva there is an unfolding which bursts the encircling shell of maya and creation then takes place by division of shiva and shakti or of hum and sa the sharada says the devta para shakti maya is again itself divided such divisions being known as bindu bija and nada bindu is of the nature of nada of shiva and bija of shakti and nada has been said to be the relation of these two by those who are versed in all the are versed in all the agamas the sharada says that before the bursting of the shell enclosing the brahmapada which together with its defining circumference constitutes the shabda brahman an indistinct sound arose a vyaktatma avyaktatmaravo bhavat this avyakta avyakta nada is both the first and the last state of nada according uh, according as it is viewed from the standpoint of evolution or involution for nada as raghava bhatta says exists in three states in nada are the gunas sattva rajas and tamas which form the substance of prakriti which with shiva it it is which with shiva it is when tamoguna predominates nada is merely an in an indistinct when tamoguna predominates nada is merely an indistinct or unmanifested that is uh, dhvanyatmako vyakta vyakta nada unmanifested sound in the nature of dhvani in this state in which it is a phase of avyakta nada it is called nibodhika or bodhini it is nada when rajoguna is in the ascent when there is a sound in which there is something like a connected or combined disposition of the letters when the sattva guna pre, uh, preponderates nada when the sattva guna preponderates nada assumes the form of bindu the action of rajas on tamas is to veil v e i l its own independent actions effects and arrangement which is only perfected by the emergence of the essentially manifesting sat- sattvika guna set into play by it nada bindu and nibodhika and the shakti of which they are the specific manifestations are said to be in the form of sun moon and fire respectively gyana spiritual wisdom is spoken of as fire as it burns up all actions and the tamoguna is associated with it for when the effect of cause and effect of action are really known then action ceases ichcha is the moon the moon contains the 16th digit the amakala with its nectar which neither increases nor decreases nor decays and ichcha or will is the eternal precursor of creation yeah kriya is like sun for as the sun by its light makes all things visible 
So unless there is action and striving, there cannot be realization or manifestation. As the Gita says, as one sun makes manifest all the lokas. The Shabda Brahman manifests itself in a triad of energies, that is knowledge, jnana shakti, will, itcha shakti, and action, kriya shakti, associated with the three gunas of prakriti, tamas, sattva, and rajas. From the Parambindu, who is both uh, Bindvatmaka and Kalatma, that is Shakti issued, that is Shakti issued Rodri, Rudra, and his Shakti, whose forms are fire, vanni, and whose activity is knowledge, jnana. Vama and Vishnu and his Shakti, whose form is the sun, and whose activity is kriya, that is action, and Jeshtha and Brahma and his Shakti, whose form is the moon and whose activity is desire. The, uh, the Vamakesvara Tantra says that Tripura is threefold as Brahma, Vishnu and Isa and as the energy is desire, wisdom and and as the energy is desire, wisdom and action, the energy of will when Brahman would create, the energy of wisdom when she reminds him, she Shakti reminding Shiva, saying, let this be thus. And when thus knowing he acts, she becomes the energy of action. The Devi is thus Icha Shakti, Jnana Shakti, Kriya Shakti, Swarupini. Parashiva exists as a serpentary under the serpentary, uh, a, a septenary, oh my god. Parashiva exists as a septenary under the form, firstly, of Shambhu, who is the associate of time, Kalabandhu. From him issues Sadashiva, who pervades and manifests all things. And then come Ishana and the triad, Rudra, Vishnu and Brahma, each with his respective Shakti, without whom they avail nothing. Separately and particularly associated with the Gunas, Tamas, Sattva and Rajas. Of these Devas, the last triad, together with Ishana and Sadashiva, are the five Shivas who are collectively known as the Mahapreta, whose Bija is... Uh, okay, I have no idea how to pronounce this. It's written H S A O H S A U H. Swa or so. How is this supposed to be pronounced? Never heard this word. Whose bija is H S A U H. So. Of the Mahapreta, it is said that the last four form of the support and the fifth, the seat of the bed on which the Devi is united with Paramashiva in the room of uh, Chintamani stone on the jeweled island clad with clumps of kadamba and heavenly trees set in the ocean of ambrosia. My footnote says that for this see Ananda Lahari of Shankaracharya and Rudra Yamala. Rudra Yamal. According to the Bahur Pashtaka and uh, Bhairava, Bhairava Yamal, the bed is Shiva, the pillow is uh, Maheshana, and uh, the matting Sadashiva and the four support and the four supports Brahma, Hari, Rudra, and Ishana. Hence, Devi is called Panchapreta uh, Manchadhi, Manchadhisaini. Manchadhisaini, right? Lalita Saharan Ama. Lalita Sahasran Ama. Sahasran Ama. It's pr uh, the they have separated the word. That's why I mispronounced. Shiva is variously addressed in this work as Shambhu, Sadashiva, Shankara, Maheshwara, etc. Names which indicate particular states, qualities and manifestation of the one in its descent, descent towards the many, for there are many Rudras. Thus, Sadashiva indicates the predominance of the Sattva, sattva Guna. His names are many, 1008 being given in the 69th chapter of the Shiva Puran and in the 17th chapter of the uh, Anushasana Parvan of the Mahabharata. Shakti is both Maya, that by which the Brahman creating the universe is able to make itself appear to be different from what it really is, and Mula Prakriti, or the unmanifested state of that which, when manifest, is the universe of name and form, Avyakta. It is the primary so-called material cause consisting of the equipoise of the triad of Guna, or qualities which are sattva, that which manifests. <coughs> Rajas, that which acts. <coughs> Tamas, that which veils and produces inertia. 
the three gunas represent nature as the revelation of spirit nature as the passage of descent from spirit to matter or of ascent from matter to spirit and nature as the dense veil of spirit the dev is thus the dev is thus guna nidhi or uh, also known as uh, uh, you can translate it as treasure house of guna the dev is thus guna nidhi mula prakriti is the womb into which brahman casts the seed from which all things are born mula prakriti the womb thrills to the movement of the essentially active rajaguna the equilibrium of the triad is destroyed and the guna now in varied combinations evolves under the illumination of shiva or chit in this case the universe which is ruled by maheshwara and maheshwari the dual principles of shiva and shakti which are in such dual form the product of the polarity manifested in manifested in parashakti maya pervade the whole universe and are present in man in the swayambhu linga of the muladhara and the devi kundalini who in serpent form encircles it the shabda brahman assumes in the body of man the form of the devi kundalini and as such is in all pranis the breathing creatures and in the shape of letters appears in appeared in uh, appearing in prose and verse kundala means coiled hence kundalini whose form is that of a coiled serpent means that which is coiled she is the luminous vital energy or jiva shakti which manifests as prana she sleeps in the muladhara muladhara and has 3 and a half coils corresponding in number with the 3 and a half bindus of which the kubjika tantra speaks when after closing the ears the sound of her hissing is not heard death approaches okay when after closing the ears the sound of her hissing is not heard death approaches from the first avyakta creation creation issued the second mahat with its three gunas distinctly manifested then sprung the third creation ahamkara selfhood which is of uh, threefold form vaikarika or pure satvik ahamkara the taijasa or rajasika ahamkara and the tamasika or bhutadika ahamkara the latter is the origin of the subtle essences tanmatra of the tatvas ether air fire water earth associated with sound touch sight taste and smell and with colors pure transparency shyama red white and yellow there is some difference in the schools as to uh, that which Uh, as to as to that uh, which each of the three forms produces but uh, from such th- from but from such threefold form of ahamkara issue the indriyas senses and the devas dik uh, devas dik uh, uh, vata arka prachetas vanni indra upendra mitra and the ashwins the vaikarika tejasa and bhutadika are the fourth fifth and sixth creations which are known as prakrita or appertaining to prakriti the rest which are products of these such as the vegetable world with its upward life uh, current upward life current animals with horizontal life current and bhuta preta and the like uh, whose life current tends downward constitute the uh, vaikrita creation the two being known as the uh, kaumara creation the goddess devi is the great shakti she is maya for uh, for of Uh, she is maya for of her the maya which produces the samsara is as lord of maya she is mahamaya devi is avidya uh, nations because she binds and vidya because okay devi is avidya because she binds and she is vidya because she liberates and destroys the destroys the samsara she is prakriti and as existing before creation is the uh, adya or the primordial shakti devi is the vachaka shakti the manifestation of chit in prakriti and the vachya shakti or chit itself the atma should be contemplated as devi shakti or devi is thus the brahman revealed in its mother aspect shri mata as creatrix and nourisher of the worlds kali says of herself in yogini tantra सच्चिदनंद रूपाहम ब्रह्मैवहम स्फूरत प्रभम 
So the Devi is described with attributes both of qualified Brahman and she is also addressed with epithets which denote the unconditioned Brahman since that Brahman is but the manifestation of the Absolute. She is the great mother Ambika sprung from the sacrificial hearth of the fire of the grand consciousness Chit decked with the sun and moon Lalita she who plays whose play is world play whose eyes playing like fish in the beauteous waters of her divine face open and shut with the appearance and disappearance of countless worlds now illuminated by her light now wrapped in her terrible darkness the devi as para brahman is beyond all form and guna the forms of the mother of the universe are threefold there is first the supreme or para form of which as the vishnu yamal says none knows no one knows about that there is next her subtle sukshma form which consists of mantra but as the mind cannot easily settle itself upon that which is formless she appears as the subject of contemplation in her third or gross sthula or physical form with hands and feet and the like as celebrated in the devi stotra of the puranas and tantras devi who as prakriti is the source of brahma vishnu and maheshwara has both male and female forms but it is in her female forms that she is chiefly contemplated for though existing in all things in a peculiar sense female beings are parts of her the great mother who exists in the form of all tantras and all yantras is as the lalita says the quote unsullied treasure house of beauty the sapphire devi devi whose slender waist bending beneath the burden of the ripe fruit of her breasts wells into jeweled hips heavy with the promise of infinite maternities as the mahadevi she exists in all forms as saraswati lakshmi gayatri durga tripura sundari annapurna and all the devis who are avatars of brahman devi as sati uma parvati and gauri is spouse of shiva it was as sati prior to daksha's sacrifice daksha yagya that the devi manifested herself to shiva in the 10 celebrated forms known as the das mahavidya referred to in the text kali bagala chinnamasta bhuvaneshwari matangini shodashi shodasi dhumavati tripura sundari tara and bhairavi when at the daksha yagya she yielded up her life in shame and sorrow at the treatment accorded by her father to her husband shiva uh, accorded to her husband shiva took away the body and ever bearing it with him remained wholly distraught and spent with grief to save the world from the forces of evil which arose and grew with the withdrawal of his of his divine control vishnu and his discus chakra cut the dead body of Sh- sati which shiva bore into 51 fragments which fell to earth at the places thereafter known as the 51 mahapitha sthana refer to in the text where devi with her bhairava is worshiped under various names besides the forms of the devi in the brahmanda there is her subtle form kundalini in the body uh pindan pindanda these are but some but some only of her endless forms she is seen as one and as many as it were but one moon reflected in countless waters she exists too in all animals and inorganic things the universe with all its beauties is as the devi purana says but a part of her all this diversity of form is but the infinite manifestation of the flowering beauty of the one supreme life a doctrine which is nowhere else taught with greater wealth of il- illustration than in the shakta uh, shakta shastras and tantras the great bharga in the bright sun and all devtas and indeed all life and being are wonderful and are worshipful but only as her manifestations and he who worships them otherwise is in the words of the great devi bhagavat quote like unto a man who with the light of a clear lamp in his hands yet falls into some waterless and terrible well end quote <coughs> the highest worship for which the sadhaka is qualified adhikari only after external worship and that internal form known as uh, sadhara is described as nira niradhara niradhara therein pure intelligence is the supreme shakti 
who is worshipped as the very self, the witness freed of the glamour of the manifold universe. By one's own direct experience of Maheshwari as the self, she is with reverence made the object of that worship which leads to liberation. This was the end of this chapter. Next chapter is called Guna. Now let me check some comments. <coughs> Work culture is not permanent. You can see in many countries, work hours initially increase with more industrialization, but later decreases as tasks are slowly, t steadily automated. Exactly. That's what I was saying that when, once we get away from this startup phase, which will, which will last for hardly what, 10, 20 years max, then it will again slow down. She is a 16 year old Shodashi Shodoshi. Oh, Shodoshi. I see the form in which Ramakrishna Dev Oh, thanks. Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. Tantre, Tantre, Vishu, Niskan, Right now, <laughs> India does not have enough capital to bring about sufficient productivity. Yeah. So the current gen will have to work asses off to earn money. Exactly. So the companies get this capital. It's all a pro right. The lack of capital is why in India the work is very uh, uh, labor oriented. Once this labor earns enough to get capital to increase productivity, we will see tremendous change. And also, a lot of people already have some money to quit jobs because there are so many avenues open. No. See, if you want to become a su successful YouTuber or anything in your um, in in the non-mainstream professions, even then, it's best that you work <laughs> 70 hours a week. But even if you don't, it's it's still a doable thing. Okay, so since there are so many avenues open, I think there will be a negotiation that uh, companies will have to lose some people because not everyone wants to work 70, 80 hours a week. And then there are some people who really want to work 70, 80 hours a week. Like when Twitter was firing everyone willy-nilly, everyone who quit their jobs thought that, oh, Twitter will go down now. But Elon Musk kept 500 absolute fucking beasts who would work all day. So there are people like that. So I think this is the beauty of capitalism that everyone goes home happy. The employees are getting someone to work with. The people who want to work 78 hours a uh, week, they get to work in the in that profession. And people who don't want, they quit their job, become travel bloggers. Like I was describing, a, a friend did, a friend of mine did already. Tomar Kamma Pujar justification. Uh, 70 hours is too much. Yeah, but startup culture india I, india itself is a startup uh, company basically think of it that way uh, what is zan in Hin uh, israel i don't know this book uh, till now two chapters only discuss basic basic uh, hindu knowledge how is this different from puranic knowledge can you just give uh, title of rest of chapters what does shodoshi mean shodoshi means 16 uh, the title of the titles of the chapters are mount kailasa shiva shakti guna the worlds that is lokas inhabitants of the worlds and then Varna, Ashrama, Macrocosm and Microcosm, the Ages, Yugas, Scriptures of the Ages, Human Body, Three Temperaments, Guru and Shishya, Diksha, Abhisheka, Sadhana, Worship, Yoga, Sin and Virtue, Karma, Four Aims of Being, that is Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, uh, Siddhi. These are the chapters. It's a small book. Uh, no one will work 78 hours a week for a company. He was basically telling the youth of India to become entrepreneurial. Oh, if that is the case, even better. Uh, not no one. Lots of people do. I personally know people who work 78 hours a week. I would love to. I'm just uh, on my way <laughs> to, to work as long. For example, today I, have, uh, I woke up at 6 a.m. I w uh, went for a walk with my dogs. So I sat for uh, music production for an um, upcoming ad with a very, very famous cricketer, which I'll announce after the ad releases. Uh, I was doing the background music of that ad. I sat at uh, sat for working on that at 7 a.m. I got up at 6.30, worked out, had some food, had a bath, uh, then again uh, sat to work on a shorter version of the ad, then finished that, and then started the live stream. Zion is promised land, I see. I can work for myself for 10 hours a day, 14 hours a day for someone else is not feasible even if I wish and try humans have limits. Not, not, not everyone. And see, if you think you can work for yourself uh, 14 hours a day, etc. That's probably true. But most people think that way but actually don't. The moment they get self-employed, they'll again stick to uh, Netflix and 
binge eating bullshit food they they'll have an unhealthy life anyway okay so that that's how most people are <coughs> so guna it cannot be said that current explanations give a clear understanding of this subject <laughs> he is admitting himself yet such is necessary both as affording one of the chief keys to indian philosophy and to the principles which govern sadhana the term guna is generally translated quality a word which is only accepted for default for better for it must not be overlooked that the three gunas sattva rajas and tamas which are of prakriti constitute her very substance this being so all nature which issues from her the mahakarana swarupa is called trigunatmaka and is composed of the same guna in different states of relation to one another the functions of sattva rajas and tamas are to reveal to make active and to suppress respectively <coughs> rajas is the dynamic as sattva and tamas are static principles yeah rajas is the dynamic sattva and tamas are uh, static principles that is to say sattva and tamas can neither reveal nor suppress without being first rendered active by rajas these gunas work by mutual suppression the unrevealed prakriti a vyakta prakriti or devi is the state of stable equilibrium of these three gunas when this state is dist- disturbed the manifested universe appears in every object of which one or the other uh, in which one or other of the three gunas is in the ascendant thus in devas as in uh, those who approach the divya state sattva predominates and rajas and tamas are very much reduced that is their independent manifestation is reduced they are in one sense still there for where rajas is not independently active it is operating on sattva to suppress tamas which appears or disappears to the extent to which it is or is not subject to suppression by the revealing principle in the ordinary human uh, human jiva considered uh, in the ordinary human jiva considered as a class tamas is less reduced than in the case of the deva but very much reduced when comparison is made with the animal jiva rajas has great independent activity and sattva is also considerably active in the animal creation sattva has considerably less activity rajas has less independent activity than in man but is much more active than in the vegetable world tamas is greatly less predominant uh, preponderant than in the latter in the vegetable kingdom tamas is more pre- preponderant than in the case of animals and both rajas and sattva less so in the inorganic creation rajas makes tamas active to suppress both sattva and its own independent activity it will thus be seen that the upward or revealing movement from the predominance of of tamas to that of sattva represents the spiritual progress of the jivatma again as between each member of these classes one or uh, other of uh, three gunas may be or more uh, may be more or less in the ascendant thus in one man as compared with another the sattva guna may predominate in which case his temperament is sattvic or as the tantra calls it divya bhava in another the rajoguna may prevail and in the third the tamo tamoguna tamo tamoguna in which case the individual is described as rajasic or tamasic or to use tantric uh, phraseology he is said to belong to veera bhava or is a pashu respectively <coughs> again the vegetable creation is obviously less tamasic and more rajasic and sattvic than the mineral and even amongst these uh, uh, these last there may be possibly some which are less tamasic than others etymologically sattva is derived from sat that which is eternally existent the eternally existent is also chit pure intelligence or spirit and ananda or bliss in a secondary sense sat is also used to denote the good and commonly though such uh, use obscures the original meaning the word sattva guna is rendered good quality it is however good in the sense that it is productive of good and happiness in such a case in such a case however stress is laid rather on a necessary quality or effect in the ethical sense of sat than upon its original meaning in the primary sense sat is that which reveals nature is a revelation of spirit sat when nature is such a revelation of spirit there it manifests manifests as sattva guna it is the shining forth form 
it is the shining it is the shining forth from under the veil of the hidden spiritual substance sat and that quality in things which reveals this is sattva guna so of a pregnant woman it is said that she is anta sattva or instinct with sattva wow she in whom sattva as jiva uh, is living in a hidden state anta sattva wow whose characteristic guna is sattva but nature not only reveals but is also a dense covering or veil of spirit at times so dense that the ignorant fail to discern the spirit which it veils when nature is a veil of spirit there it appears in its quality of tamoguna but let me underline this part <coughs> in this case the tamoguna is currently spoken of as representative of inertia because that is the effect of the nature which veils this quality again when translated into the moral sphere becomes ignorance sloth etc in a third sense nature is a bridge between spirit which reveals and matter which veils okay spirit which reveals and matter which veils where where nature is a bridge of descent from spirit to matter or of ascent from matter to spirit there it manifests itself as rajaguna this is generally referred to as the quality of activity and when transferred to the sphere of feeling it shows itself as passion each thing in nature then contains that in which spirit is manifested or reflected as in a mirror or sattvaguna that by which spirit is covered as it were by a veil of darkness or tamoguna and that which is the vehicle for the descent into matter or the return to spirit or rajaguna thus sattva is the light of nature as tamas is its shade i'll underline this sattva is the light of nature and tamas is its shade <coughs> rajas is as it were a blended tint oscillating between each of the extremes constituted by the other gunas the object of tantric sadhana is to bring out and make pre preponderant the sattva guna by the aid of rajas which operates to make the former guna active the subtle body linga sharira of the jivatma comprises in it buddhi ahamkara manas and the 10 senses 10 senses which we had uh, learnt of in the manusmriti as well <coughs> this subtle body creates for itself gross bodies suited to the spiritual state of the jivatma under the influence of uh, prarabdha karma buddhi becomes tamasic rajasic or satvic in the first case the jivatma assumes inanimate bodies in the second active passionate bodies and in the third satvic bodies of varying degrees of spiritual excellence ranging from man to the deva the gross body is also trigunatmaka this body conveys impressions to the jivatma through the subtle body and the buddhi in particular when satva is made active impressions of when sattva is made active impressions of happiness result and when rajas or tamas are active the impressions are those of sorrow and delusion these impressions are the result of the predominance of these respective gunas the acting of rajas on sattva produ uh, produces happiness as its own independent activity or operation on tamas produces sorrow and delusion respectively where sattva or happiness is predominant there sorrow and delusion are suppressed where rajas or sorrow is predominant there happiness and delusion are suppressed and where tamas or delusion predominates there as in the case of the inorganic world both happiness and sorrow are suppressed all objects share these three states in different proportions <coughs> there is however always in the jivatma an admixture of sorrow with happiness due to the operation of rajas for happiness which is the fruit of righteous acts done to attain happiness is after all only a vikara the natural state of the jivatma that is the state of its own true nature is that bliss ananda which arises from the pure knowledge of the self in which both happiness and sorrow are equally objects of indifference happiness and sorrow are equally objects of indifference okay stoicism here jitendriya indriya jaya 
the worldly enjoyment of a person involves pain to self or others this is the result of the pursuit of happiness whether by righteous or unrighteous acts as spiritual progress is made the gross body becomes more and more refined in inanimate bodies karma operates to pro- to the production of pure delusion on the exhaustion of such karma the jivatma assumes animate bodies for the operation of such forms of karma as lead to sorrow and happiness mixed with delusion in the vegetable world sattva is but little active with a corresponding lack of discrimination for discrimination is the effect of sattva in buddhi and from discrimination arises the recognition of pleasure and pain prioritization prioritization okay guys prioritization equals to judgment equals to hierarchies <coughs> equals to standards equals to discrimination in the vegetable world sattva is but little active with a corresponding lack of discrimination because discrimination is the effect of sattva in buddhi and from discrimination arises the recognition of pleasure and pain conceptions of right and wrong of the transitory and intransitory and so forth which are the fruit of a high degree of indiscrimination or of activity of sattva in the lower animal sattva is uh, sattva in buddhi is not sufficiently active to lead to any degree of development of these conceptions <coughs> in man however the sattva in buddhi is considerably active and in consequence these conceptions are natural in him for this reason the human birth is for spiritual purposes so important all men however are not capable of forming such conceptions in an equal degree the degree of activity in an individual's buddhi depends on his uh, prarabdha karma however bad such karma may be in any particular case the individual is yet gifted with that amount of discrimination which if properly aroused and aided will enable him to better his spiritual condition by inducing the rajaguna in him to give more and more activity to the sattva guna in his buddhi on this account proper guidance and spiritual direction uh, are necessary a good guru by reason of his own nature and spiritual attainment and disinterested wisdom will both mark out for the shishya the path which is proper for him and aid him to follow it by the infusion of the tejas which is in the guru himself will sadhana is as stated a process for the stimulation of the sattva guna it is evident that one form of it is not suitable to all <coughs> it must be adapted to the spiritual condition of the shishya otherwise it will cause injury instead of good therefore it is that therefore it is that the adoption of certain forms of sadhana by persons who are not competent or adhikari may not only be fruitless of any good result but may even lead to evils which sadhana uh, as a re- general principle is designed to prevent therefore also is it said that it that it is it better to follow one's own dharma than that however exalted be of another end of this chapter next chapter is the lokas the worlds uh, again let me check some comments shobai bolo namo parvati patay har har mahadev har har mahadev and people who misinterpret shastra say pregnancy is impure <laughs> or shoj must be to protect the mother and baby from infections that could be brought by touch of other people hmm uh, pe- people don't say that that's for mature uh, maturation not pregnancy i learned somewhere in universe sattva is light rajas is motion tamas is empty dark inactivity and is can i say tantra is tamasic only bhagavat purana sattvic krishna is rest all are rajasic tamasic not leading to moksha <coughs> the worlds lokas this earth which is the object of the physical senses and of the knowledge based thereon is but one of 14 worlds or regions placed above and below it of which as the sutra says knowledge may be obtained by meditation on the solar nerve or nadi sushumna nadi in the merudanda on this nadi six of the upper worlds are threaded the seventh and highest overhanging it uh, overhanging it in the uh, sahasrara padma the thousand petaled lotus the sphere of earth bhur loka with its continents their mountains and rivers and with its oceans is the seventh or lowest of the upper worlds beneath it are the hells and nether world the names of which are given below which we have discussed in brahma purana as well above the terrestrial sphere is 
भूवर लोका और द एटमोस्फेरिक स्फियर नोन एज द अंतरिक्ष एक्सटेंडिंग फ्रॉम द अर्थ टू द सन इन विच द सिद्धाज एंड अदर सेलेस्टियल बींग्स देव योनी ऑफ द अपर एयर ड्यूएल फ्रॉम द सन टू द पोलर पोल स्टार ध्रुव इज द स्वर लोका और द हेवनली स्फियर स्वर्ग इज दैट विच डिलाइट्स द माइंड एज हेल नरक इज दैट विच गिवज इट पेन इन द फॉर्मर इज द अबोर्ड ऑफ द देवा एंड द ब्लेस्ट These three spheres are the regions of the consequences of work and are termed transitory as compared with the three highest spheres and the fourth which is of a mixed character when the jiva is has received his reward he is reborn again on earth for it is not good action but the knowledge of the atma which procures liberation or moksha above swarloka is maharloka and above it the three ascending regions known as the janaloka tapoloka and satyaloka each inhabited by various forms of celestial intelligence of higher and higher degree below the earth bha and above the nether worlds are the hells commencing with avici and of and of which according to popular theology there are 34 though it is elsewhere said there are as many hells as there are offenses for which particular punishments are meted out of these six are known as the great hells hinduism however even when popular knows nothing of a hell of eternal torment to it nothing is eternal but the Bra- brahman <coughs> issuing from the hells the jiva is again reborn to make its future below the hells are the seven nether worlds uh, sutala vitala tala tala mahatala rasatala atal atala atala and patala where according to the puranas dwell the naga serpent divinities brilliant with jewels and danavas wander fascinating even the most austere yet below patala is the form of vishnu proceeding from the dark quality tamoguna known as the shesha serpent or ananta bearing the world as a diadem attended by his shakti varuni his own embodied radiance okay next up uh, next chapter is called inhabitants of the worlds okay let's see some comments again dada tomar boi ta nam bol eta etai na जेटा भिडियोर नाम से इंट्रोडक्शन टू तंत्रशास्त्र सेवेंटी आवर्स अफ वर्क ओनली पीपल हू हैव नो लाइफ उल डू दैट आई टी इज अ प्लेस वैर एम्प्लयज हैव टू डील उथ सैकोलॉजिकल प्रॉब्लम द मोस्ट एम एवरी वन नीड्स अ सोशल लाइफ एगेन नट एवरी वन वॉन्ट्स अ सोशल लाइफ एंड वट डू मीन बै पीपल हू हैव नो लाइफ वाट्स द लाइफ आउटसाइड द ऑफिस लाइक ओके if the out, if the life outside the office is just uh, sleeping around and uh, getting drunk uh, i'd say okay better be in your be in your office only but to each his own i'm all for consent etc but uh, most of you are going on forgetting that there are some people who really like to work all day because they really got into their in, into that particular job because they wanted it to not because their parents forced them into that job people who are like that uh, people or people who found the fun in that job after getting into it or people uh, uh, who are getting some success and are now addicted to that success and now getting ambitious that they want to go higher and higher in this company all of them want to work 70 hours a week uh, not only no life for employees but it doesn't help the company productivity either it does if the people who are working their 70 hours a week actually want to work 70 hours a week by force it's not going to happen of course but uh, whatever but now now the company can't judge with everyone right that uh, okay re- are you really is your productivity going to best come out uh, in by working 70 hours or 50 hours they'll have to do a complete psychological profile for that that's not possible so they'll make everyone work 70 hours a week those who are burned out will will get burned out and quit the job hopefully and and uh, and say uh, fuck off, fuck you to the boss and go off and become a a self employed person that's that's great i want that to happen so that a, 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 a conversation happens and uh, employers do feel at uh, at some point that uh, we are losing so many senior employees we'll have to train some other kid randomly uh, so why not just put some less pressure but so many people are there in this country that i don't think it's happening anytime soon so many people so many ambitious people are there who are ready to work 70 hours a week that's not going to happen 
দাদা তুমি কিন্তু স্ট্রমেন করছো স্ট্রমেন করছি বিকজ আই এম ডুইং স্ট্রমেন কাইন্ড অফ কনসিয়াসলি বিকজ দেয়ার আর বোথ কাইন্ডস অফ পিপল পিপল হু থিঙ্ক দ্যাট দে উইল ডু গ্রেট থিংস ওয়ান্স দে ডোন্ট ওয়ার্ক সেভেন্টি আওয়ার্স বাট দে আর জাস্ট গোয়িং টু ডু ইনসেনলি আনহেলদি থিংস ওয়েস্ট দ্যাট টাইম কমপ্লিটলি অ্যান্ড দেয়ার প্রোডাক্টিভিটি ইজ নট গোয়িং টু গেট বেটার ইভেন ইফ দে ওয়ার্ক ফিফটি আওয়ার্স দ্যাটস দোজ আর দ্য পিপল আই এম টকিং অবাউট অ্যান্ড অন দ্য টপ অফ দ্যাট দেয়ার আর পিপল হু রিয়েলি ওয়ান্ট টু ওয়ার্ক সেভেন্টি আওয়ার্স ইনহ্যাবিটেন্টস অফ দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ডস অফ দিজ লোকাস The worlds are inhabited by countless grades of beings ranging from the highest devas of whom there are many classes and degrees to the lowest animal life. The scale of beings runs from the shining manifestations to the spirit of those in which it is so veiled that it would seem almost to have disappeared in its material covering. There is but one light, one spirit whose manifestations are many. A flame enclosed in a clear glass loses but little of its brilliancy. If we substitute for the glass, paper or some other more opaque yet transparent substance, the light is dimmer. A covering of metal may be so dense as to exclude from sight the rays of light which yet burns within with within with with which yet burns within with an equal brilliancy. Just because you can't see it does not mean the fire is gone. As a fact, all such veilings f- uh, veiling forms are maya. They are nonetheless true for those who live in and are themselves part of the maik world deva or heavenly and shining one for spirit is light and self manifestation is applicable to those descending yet high manifestations of the brahman such as the seven shivas including the trinity trimurti brahma vishnu rudra devi again is the title of the supreme mother herself and is again applied to the manifold forms assumed by the one only maya such as kali saraswati lakshmi gauri gayatri samdhya uh, samdhya and others in the sense also in which it is said quote verily in the beginning there was the brahman this is from the brihadaranyaka upanishad of course the famous quote verily in the beginning there was the brahman it created the devas and <coughs> end quote <coughs> the latter term also includes lofty intelligence be- uh, intelligences belonging to the created world intermediate between ishvara himself a purusha and man who in the person of the brahmana is known as earth deva or bhudeva these spirits are of varying degrees for there are no breaks in the creation which represents an apparent descent of the brahman in gradually lowered forms throughout these forms play the divine currents of pravritti and nivritti the latter drawing to itself that which the former has set sent forth deva jiva and jada inorganic matter are in their real as opposed to their phenomenal and illusory being the one brahman which appears thus to be other than itself through its connection with the upadhi or limiting conditions with which ignorance or avidya invests it therefore all being which are the object of worship are each of them but the brahman seen through the veil of avidya though the worshippers of devas may not know it they worship is uh, their worship is in reality the worship of the brahman and hence the mahanirvana tantra says that quote as all streams flow to the ocean so the worship given to any deva is received by the brahman on the other hand those who knowing this worship the devas do so as manifestations of brahman and thus worship it immediately worship it immediately the sun the sun the most glorious symbol in the physical world is the maik vesture of her her with capital h who is clothed with the sun in the lower ranks of the celestial hierarchy are the deva yonis some of whom are mentioned in the opening verses of the first chapter of the text the devas are of two classes unborn ajata that is those which have not and those uh, which have Uh, which have sadhya evolved from humanity as in the case of king nahusa who became indra opposed to the divine hosts are the asura danava daitya rakshasa who with other spirits represent the tamasic or demonic element in creation all devas from the highest downwards are subordinate to both time and karma so it is said quote salutations to karma over which 
not even vidhi or brahma prevails end quote namsat karma karma bhyo vidhi rapi na yebhya prabhavati the rendering of the term deva as god has led to a misapp- misapp- misapprehension of hindu thought the use of the term angel may also mislead for though the world of devas has in some respects analogy to the angelic choirs the christian conception of these beings and their origin and functions does not include but in fact fact excludes other ideas connoted by the sanskrit term so it's a very limiting term the english words the pitris or fathers are a creation according to some separate from the predecessors of humanity okay and are according to others the lunar ancestry who are addressed in prayer with the devas from brahma who is known as the grandfather pitamaha of the human race issued marichi atri and others his mental sons the Ag- uh, agnish agniswatta uh, somsaya <coughs> uh, havishmanta us usma uh, usmapa and other classes of pitris remembering according to the markandeya purana 31 Uh, markande purana 31 so tarpanam or oblation is daily offered to these pitris the term is also applied to the human ancestors of the worshipper generally up to the 7th generation to whom in the sraddha the obsequial rites pinda and water are afforded offered with the uh, mantra swadha which we have learnt in the brahma purana of course you all know from other texts as well the rishis are seers who know by their knowledge are the makers of shastra and see all their mantras the word comes from the root rush rasa rishati uh, prap prapnoti rishati prapnoti rishati prapnoti sarvam mantram gyanena pasyati sang uh, sansara sansara uh, parangva etc the seven great rishis or saptarshis of the first manavantara are marichi atri angiras pulaha kratu pulastya and vashishta in other manavantaras there are other saptarshis in the present manavantara the seven are kashyapa atri vashishta vishwamitra gautama jamadagni bharadwaja to the rishis the vedas were revealed vyasa taught the rigveda so revealed to pila the yajurveda to vaisham vaishampayana the samaveda to jamini, jamini atharva veda to sumantu and itihasa and purana to suta the three chief classes of rishis are the brahmarshi born of the mind of brahma the devarshi of lower rank and rajarshi or kings who became rishis through their knowledge and austerities such as janaka uh, rituparna etc the ra- <coughs> the the shrutarsi are makers of shastras as shushruta the kandarsi are of the karma kanda such as jaimini the muni who may be a rishi is a sage muni is so called on an account of his uh, mananam mananat muni muni ruchiyate mananam is that thought investigation and discussion which marks the independent thinking mind ah uh-huh. first there is uh, sva, sr- uh, sravanam listening uh, sravanam okay first there is sravanam listening then mananam manan karna then mananam which is the thinking or understanding discussion upon and testing of what is heard as opposed to the mere acceptance on trust of the lower intelligence uh, this is the this is the brilliance of hinduism as well always contemplate question think of it understand if you don't understand keep questioning don't just accept anything someone tells you and then there are experiences of course these two are followed by uh, nidhi n- nidhi dhya- dhyasanam nidhi dhyasanam which is attention and profound meditation on the conclusions siddhanta drawn from what is so heard and reasoned upon as the mahabharata says the vedas differ and so do the smritis no one is a muni who has no independent opinion of his own wow can you believe this for those of you who have read the mahabharata probably know this this is brand new information to me nasau muni muniryasya muniryasya matam na bhinnam what a great line i have to mark this no one is a muni who has no independent ofi- opinion of his own see this is why H- hinduism is so individualistic individualism is so encouraged in hinduism and on top of that 
not only is it very much uh, encourages individuality on top of that it actually has no call united call for action community based call for action ke jao isko maar do therefore hindu unity <laughs> is a big pipe dream the human being is called jiva that is the embodied atma possessed by egoism and of the notion that it directs the uh, puriyastaka namely the five organs of action karmendriya karmendriya the five organs of perception gyanendriya the fourfold antakarana or mental self manas buddhi ahamkara chitta the five vital airs prana the that that, uh, that is the five vital pranas the five elements kama desire karma avidya illusion when these false notions are destroyed the embodiment is destroyed and the wearer of the my garment attains nirvana when the jiva is absorbed in brahman there is no longer any jiva remaining as such okay next chapter is varna <coughs> let me have a sip of tea and let me check some comments again ay chaitanya mahaprabhu versus adi shankara who is better better in what sense better better for what achinta bheda abheda versus advaita vedanta mm, the question is divisive itself yeah mm-hmm. dai jiggesh ko chu uh, which one do you all follow uh, some people follow chaitanya mahaprabhu some people follow shankara charya uh, most most non bengali hindus i think follow shankara charya a lot of uh, bengalis especially i guess non brahmins follow chaitanya mahaprabhu Vashishth is said to be born uh, some generations later, not mind born of Brahma, uh, yet he is Saptarshi. That's the entire concept of Hinduism. <laughs> yeah. So now Varna. Ordinarily, ordinarily there are four chief divisions or castes Varna <laughs> of Hindu society vis-a-vis Brahman priesthood teaching, Kshatriya warrior, Vaishya merchant, Shudra servile. said to have sprung respectively from the mouth arm thigh and foot of brahma a man of the first three classes becomes an uh, becomes on investiture during the upanayana ceremony of the sacred thread twice born dvija it is said that by birth one is shudra by samskara upanayana dvija by study of the vedas one attains the state of a vipra and that he who has knowledge of the brahman is a brahmana The present tantra however speaks of a fifth or hybrid class samanya resulting from intermixture between the others it is a peculiarity of tantra that its worship is largely free of vedic exclusiveness whether based on caste sex or otherwise interesting as the gautamiya tantra says the tantra is for all men of whatever caste and for all women sarva varnadhikarascha narinam yogya eva cha wow gautamiya gautamiya tantra interesting okay now ashrama the four stages conditions or periods in the life of a brahmana are first that of the chaste student or brahmachari second the period of secular life as a married householder or grihastha third that of the recluse or vanaprastha when there is retirement from the world and lastly that of the beggar or bhikshu who begs his single daily meal and meditates upon the supreme spirit to which he is about to return and this we have learned de- in detail in the manusmriti live streams for the kshatriya there are the first three ashramas for the vaishya the first two first two meaning a uh, chaste student and then secular life and for the shudra the grihastha and ashrama only the grihastha ashrama only the tantra states that in the kali age there are only two ashramas oh lol so for everyone just grihas uh, grihastha and uh, brahmacharya i guess the second grihastha the second grihasthya and the last bhikshu or avaduta oh okay neither the conditions of life nor the character capacity and powers of the people of this age allow of the first and third hmm so no vanaprastha and no uh, brahmacharya i i see the two ashramas prescribed for kali age are open to all castes indiscriminately where are they getting this this is a pretty anti caste text 
there are it is now commonly said two main divisions of avadhuta namely shaiva uh, shaiva vadhuta shaiva avadhuta and uh, brahma uh, brahma vadhuta of each of which there are again three divisions of the first class the divisions are firstly shaiva shaiva vadhuta who is apurna imperfect though an ascetic he is also a householder like shiva hence his name the second is the wandering stage of the shaiva or the parivrajaka who has now left the world and passes this passes his time doing puja japa etc visiting the tirtha and pitha or places of pilgrimage in this stage which though higher is still imperfect the avadhuta is competent for ordinary sadhana with a shakti the third is the perfect stage of a shaiva wearing only the kaupina he renounces all things and all rights though within certain limits he may practice some yoga and is permitted to meet the request of a woman who makes it of him uh, and is permitted to meet the request of a woman who makes it of him uh okay some explanations are given this is not however as some s- uh, some may uh, suppose a peculiarly tantric precept because it is said in shruti talpag uh, talpag uh, talpagatam na pariharet she who comes to your bed is not to be refused for the rule of chastity which is binding on him yields to such an uh, such an advance on the part of woman shankaracharya says that talpag uh, talpagatam is sama uh, sama gamarthinim adding that this is the doctrine of rishi vamadeva of the second class the three divisions are firstly the uh, brahma vadhuta who like the shaiva vadhuta is imperfect apurna and householder he is not permitted however to have a shaiva shakti and is restricted to svia svia shakti the second class brahma parivrajaka uh, parivrajaka is similar to the shaiva of the same class except that ordinary except that ordinarily he is not permitted to have anything to do with any woman though he may under the guidance of his guru practice yoga accompanied by shakti the third or highest class hamsavadhata uh, is similar to the uh, third shaiva degree except that he must under no circumstances touch a woman or metals nor may he practice any rites or keep any observances okay now a small chapter macrocosm and microcosm <coughs> the universe consists of a mahabrahmanda or grand cosmos and of numerous uh brihad brahmanda or macrocosms evolved from it as is said by the nirvana tantra all which is in the first is in the second in the latter are heavenly bodies and beings which are microcosms reflecting on a minor scale the greater worlds which evolved from them as above so below the mystical maxim of the west is stated in the uh, vish uh, vishwasara tantra as follows what is here is elsewhere what is not here is nowhere yadhi yadhi hasti tadanyatra tadanyatra i'm i'm pronouncing these horribly yadhi hasti tadanyatra yanne hasti na ta tatkvachit the macrocosm has its meru or vertebral column extending from top to bottom there are 14 regions descending from satyaloka the highest these are the seven upper and the seven nether worlds uh, videyante the meru of human body is the spinal column and within it are the chakras in which the worlds are said to dwell in the words of the uh, shaktananda tarangini they are pinda madhya madhye sthita satya has been said to be in the sahasrara and tapa jana maha sva bhuva bhu in the agya vishuddhi anahata manipura swadhi swadhis swadhisthana and muladhara lotuses respectively below muladhara and in the joints sides anus and organs of generation are the nether worlds the bones near the spinal column are the kula parvata the seven main chains of mountains in bharata uh, as mentioned in vishnu puran are the kul, uh, seven kula parvatas kula parvat is the seven main chains of mountains such are the correspondences as to earth then as to water the nadis the nadis are the rivers the seven substances of the body 
dhatu are the seven islands sweat tears and the like are the oceans fire exists in the muladhara shushumna navel and elsewhere uh, the the kamagni in muladhara badala in the bones in shushumna the fire of lightning and in the navel earthly fire as the worlds are supported by the prana and other vayus or the airs so is the body supported by the 10 vayus prana etc there is the same akasha or ether in both the witness within is the purusha without okay the witness within is the purusha without for the personal soul of the microcosm corresponds to the cosmic soul hiranyagarbha in the macrocosm as to the distribution of elements in the chakras see chapter 4 Uh, of uh, bhuta shuddhi tantra next chapter is the yugas okay let me ha- check some comments again the curse was because he lied not about the varna he was okay acha hiran is saying acha i have recently been listening to a lot of swami sarvapriyananda and advaita vedanta teachings what are some uh, some of the differences in his belief with his con teachings A guy once said that Bhagwat uh, Bhagwan Parashuram cursed Karn because he lied to a Brahman. So isn't it casteism because he discovered it by his will to control uh, pain? Please explain. Uh, okay. Mm. As above, so below is believed demonic phrase. <laughs> But didn't Parashuram ji take an oath that he won't teach Shatri after killing the clan twenty-one times? The Tat Kwachit line is about Mahabharat that for dharma, artha kam moksha everything is in Mahabharat. If, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. that i have heard that that which is there in mahabharata is everywhere that which is not there in mahabharata is nowhere the the yugas the passage of time within a mahayuga influences for the worse uh, influences for uh, for the worse man and the world in which he lives okay the passage of time within a mahayuga influences for the worse man and the world in which he lives uh, in w- in which he lives this passage is marked by the four yugas called satya treta dwapara and kali yuga the last being that in that in which it is generally supposed the world now is the yuga is a fraction of a kalpa or day of brahma of uh, 4 4 billion th- 320 million years the kalpa is divided into 14 manavantaras which are again subdivided into 71 mahayuga the length of each of which is 4 billion uh, 4 million 322 uh, 320000 human years the mahayuga great age is itself composed of four yuga uh, satya treta dwapar kali official science teaches that man appeared on the earth in an imperfect state from which he has since been gradually though continually raising himself such teaching is however in conflict with the traditions of all peoples jew babylonian egyptian hindu greek roman and christian which speak of an age when man was both innocent and happy from this state of primal perfection he fell continuing his descent until such time as the great avatars christ and others descended to save his race and enable it to regain the righteous path the garden of eden is the emblem of the uh, paradise uh, paradisical body of man there man was one with nature he was himself paradise a privileged enclosure in a garden of delight gan beden et eruditus est moes omni sapientia egypt uh, egyptiorum the satya yu- the satya yuga is according to hindu belief the golden age of righteous righteousness free of sin marked by longevity physical strength beauty and stature there were giants in those days whose moral mental and physical strength enabled them to undergo long brahmacharya and tapas Longevity permitted lengthy spiritual exercises. Life then depended on the marrow and lasted a lack of years. Men dying when they willed. Their stature was 21 cubits. To this age belong the avatars or incarnations of Vishnu, Matsya, Kurma, Varaha, Nrsimha and Vamana. Its duration is computed to be 4800 divine years which when multiplied by 360 which is a year of the devas being equal to the 2360 human years are the equivalent of 1728000 of the years of man the second age or treta 3/4 of 3/4 uh, yuga is that in which 
righteousness or dharma decreased by one fourth. The, du the duration was 3600 divine years or 1,296,000 human years. Longevity, strength and stature decreased. Life was in the bone and lasted 10,000 years. Man's stature was 14 cubits. Of sin, there, are, there appeared one quarter and of virtue, there remained three quarters. Men were still attached to pious and charitable acts, penances, sacrifices and pilgrimages, of which the chief was that to Naimisharanya. In this period appeared the avatars of Vishnu as uh, Parshuram and Rama. The third or Dvapara, one half yuga, is that in which righteousness decreased by one half, dharma, decreased by one half, and the duration was 2400 divine or 864,000 human years. A further decrease in longevity and strength and increase of weakness and disease marked this age. Life which lasted 1000 years was centered in the blood. Stature was 7 cubits. Sin and virtue were of equal force. Men became restless and though eager to acquire knowledge were deceitful and followed both good and evil pursuits. The principal place of pilgrimage was Kurukshetra. To this age belongs, according to Vyasa, Anushtubhacharya and Jayadeva, the avatar of Vishnu as Balarama, the elder brother of Krishna, who according to other accounts takes his place. In the Samdhya, or intervening period of thousand years between this and the next yuga, the Tantra was revealed, as it will be revealed at the dawn of every Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is the alleged present age in which righteousness exists to the extent of one-fourth only the duration of which is 1200 divine or 4, uh, or 432,000 human years. According to some, this age commenced in 3120 BC on the date of Vishnu's return to heaven after the 8th incarnation. This is the period which, according to the Puranas and Tantras, is characterized by the prevalence of viciousness, weakness, disease and the general decline of all that is good. Human life, which lasts at most 120, or as some say, 100 years, is dependent on food. Stature is 3.5 cubits. The chief pilgrimage is now, the now to the Ganges. In this age has appeared the Buddha Avatara. The last or Kalki Avatara, the destroyer of sin, has yet to come. It is he who will destroy iniquity and restore the age of righteousness. The Kalki Purana speaks of him as one whose body is blue like that of the rain-charged cloud who with sword in hand rides as does the rider of the apocalypse, a white horse, swift as the wind, the cherisher of the people, destroyer of the race of the Kali Yuga, the source of true religion. And Jaydev, in his ode to the incarnations, addresses him thus, For the destruction of all the impure thou drawest thy scimitar like a blazing comet. Oh, how tremendous! O oh, Keshava, assuming the body of Kalki, be victorious! O Hari, Lord of the Universe. With the Satyu Satya Yuga, a new Mahayuga will commence and the ages will continue to revolve with their rising and descending races until the close of the Kalpa or Day of Brahma. Then a night of dissolution or Pralaya of equal duration follows. The Lord reposing in Yoga Nidra on the serpent Shesha, the endless one till daybreak when the universe is created and the next Kalpa follows. Next chapter is called The Scriptures of the Ages. Each of the ages has its, has its appropriate Shastra or scripture designed to meet the characteristics and needs of the men who live in them. The Hindu Shastras are classed into Shruti, which commonly includes the four Vedas, Rig, Yajur, Sama, Atharva, and the Upanishads, the doctrine of which is philosophically exposed in the Vedanta Darshan, Smriti, such as the Dharma Shastra of Manu and other works on family and social duty prescribing for uh, Pravritti Dharma. The Puranas, of which according to the Brahma Vaivarta Purana, there were originally four lakhs and of which 18 are now regarded as the principal and four the Tantra. For each of these ages, a suitable Shastra is given. The Veda is the root of all Shastras, Mula Shastra, Vedokilo Dharma Mulam. All others are based on it. The Tantra is spoken of as a fifth Veda. Kulluka Bhatta, the celebrated commentator on Manu, says that Shruti is of two kinds, Vedic and Tantric. Vediki Tantriki Chaiva Dvividha 
श्रुति श्रुति The various shastras, however, are different presentments of Shruti, appropriate to the humanity of the age for which they are given. Thus, the tantra is that presentment of Shruti which is modelled as regards its ritual to meet the characteristics and infirmities of the Kali Yuga. As men have no longer the capacity, longevity, and moral strength necessary for the application of the Vedic Karma Kanda, the tantra prescribes a special sadhana or means or practice of its own. for the attainment of that which is the ultimate and common end of all shastras the kularnava tantra says that in the satya or krita uh, uh, krita age the shastra is shruti in the sense of the upanishads in treta yuga smriti in the sense of the dharma shastra and shruti jivika etc in the dwapara yuga the purana and in the last or kali yuga the tantra which should now be followed by all orthodox hindu worshippers the mahanirvana and other uh, tantras and tantric works lay down the same rule the tantra is also said to contain the very core of the veda to which it is described to bear the relation of paramatma to jivatma to the jivatma in a similar way kulachara is the central informing life of the gross body called vedachara each of the achara which follow it up to the kalachara being more and more subtle sheets so manusmriti is not even to be uh followed in the kali yuga next is called the human body ha oh, let me check some comments again <coughs> lord vishnu's latest avatar in the form of shri hiran shorka is to bring back glory of bengalis against hindi shovinism uh i learned from her as well but i want Uh, to learn at least the Gita word for word meaning, uh, yeah. For that we will read the Bibek Dev Brahma Mahabharat someday. Of course, Chaitanya Charita Amrita Bangla hai, Kirtan Bangla hai. The human body, the human body is Brahma Pura, the city of Brahman. Ishvara himself enters into the universe as Jiva, wherefore the Mahavakya that thou art means that the ego, which is regarded as Jiva, only from the standpoint of an Upadhi. is brahman okay so wherefore the mahavakya that uh, that thou art means that the ego is brahman which is regarded as jiva only from the standpoint of an upadhi so the five sheets s h e a t h s this i have been reading about in the uh, sri vigyan bhairav tantra as well in the body there are five koshas or sheets annamaya pranamaya manomaya vigyanamaya anandamaya or the physical and vital bodies the two mental bodies and the body of bliss in the first the lord is self conscious as being dark or fair short or tall old or youthful in the vital body he feels alive hungry and thirsty in the mental bodies he thinks and understands and in the body of bliss he resides in happiness thus garmented with the five garments the lord though all pervading appears as though he were limited by them now annamaya kosha in the material body which is called the sheath of food annamaya kosha reign the elements earth water and fire which are those presiding in the lower chakras the muladhara swadhisthana and manipura centers the two former produce food and drink which is assimilated by the fire of di- uh, digestion and converted into the body of food the indriyas are both the faculty and organs of sense there are in this body the material organs as distinguished from the faculty of sense in the gross body sharira kosha there are six eternal koshas vis-a-vis hair blood flesh which come from the mother and bone muscle marrow from the father the organs of sense indriya are of two kinds vis-a-vis gyanendriyas or organs of sensation through which knowledge of the external world is obtained that is ear skin eyes tongue nose and karmendriya or organs of action mouth arms legs anus penis the functions of which are speech holding walking excretion and procreation now pranamaya kosha the second sheath is the pranamaya kosha or sheath of breath prana which manifests itself in e- air and ether the presiding elements in the uh, anahata and vishuddha chakras there are 10 vayus or inner vital forces of which the first five are the principal namely the sapphire prana ap- apana 
द कलर ऑफ एन इवनिंग क्लाउड द सिल्वर व्याना उड़ाना द कलर ऑफ फायर और नो नो उदाना द कलर ऑफ फायर एंड द मिल्की समाना दीज आर ऑल एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ द एक्शन ऑफ वन प्राणा देवता कुंडलिनी इज द मदर ऑफ प्राणा विच शी द मूल प्रकृति इल्यूमाइंड बाय द लाइट ऑफ द सुप्रीम आत्मा जनरेट्स प्राणा इज वायु और द यूनिवर्सल फोर्स ऑफ एक्टिविटी डिवाइडेड ऑन एंटरिंग ईच इंडिविजुअल इन टू फाइव फोल्ड फंक्शन स्पेसिफिकली कंसिडर्ड प्राणा इज इंस्पिरेशन विच विथ एक्सपीरेशन is is from and to a distance of 8 and 12 inches respectively udana is the ascending vayu apana is the downward vayu expelling wind excrement urine and semen the samana or collective vayu kindles the bodily fire uh, conducting equally the food etc throughout the body vyana is the separate vayu affecting division and diffusion these forces cause respiration excretion digestion circulation for uh, if you want to learn about these these in detail uh, sri vigyan bhairav tantra is a great book function of penis is speech no i think they mentioned reproduction procreation yeah procreation you see when you do bangla pakko so much you forget english don't forget the languages you already know bro uh, don't 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 reduce the capability of your brains manomaya vigyana and anand anandamaya koshas The next two sheets are the Manomaya and Vigyana koshas. These constitute the Anta Karana, which is fourfold, namely, the mind in its twofold aspect of Buddhi and Manas, selfhood, Ahamkara, and Chitta. The function of the first is doubt, uh, samkalpa, sankalpa, vikalpatmaka, that is uncertainty, certainty. Of the second, determination, that is nischaya karini. of the third egoity of the fourth consciousness abhimana manas automatically uh, registers the facts which the senses perceive buddhi on attending to such registration discriminates determines and cognizes the object registered which is set over and against the subjective self by ahamkara the function of chitta is contemplation that or also known as chinta the faculty whereby the mind is its widest Uh, in its widest sense the mind in its widest sense raises for itself the subject of its thought and dwells thereon for whilst buddhi has but three moments in which it is born exists and dies chitta endures the antakarana is master of the 10 senses which are the outer doors through which it looks forth upon the external world the faculties as opposed to the organs or instruments of sense reside there reside here the centers of the powers inherent in the last two sheets are in the agya chakra and the region above this and below the sahasrara lotus in the latter the atma of the last sheet of bliss resides last uh, in, in the latter the atma of the last sheet of bliss the anandamaya kosha resides the physical or gross body is called sthula sharira the subtle body the sukshma sharira also called linga sharira and kadana kadana sharira comprises the 10 indriyas manas ahamkara buddhi and the five functions of prana the subtle body contains in itself the cause of rebirth into the gross body when the period of reincarnation arrives the atma by its association with the upadhis has three states of consciousness namely the jagrat or waking state when through the uh, sense organs are perceived objects of sense through the operation of manas and buddhi it is explained in the ishvara pratya bhigya uh, bhignya as follows uh, ishvara pratya bhignya uh, it's one word actually the quote is the waking state dear to all is the source of external action through the activity of the senses end quote the jiva is called jagari that is he who takes upon himself the gross body called vishva the second is swapna the dream state when the sense organs being withdrawn uh, atma is conscious of mental images generated by the impressions of jagrat experience here manas ceases to record uh, ma- so stops manas stops recording fresh sense impressions and it and buddhi so manas and buddhi work on that which manas has registered in the waking state the explanation of this state is also given in the work last cited 
quote the state of swapna is the objectification of visions perceived in the mind due to the perceptions of idea they are latent jiva in the which we kind of know of course about dreams jiva in the state of swapna is termed taijasa its individuality is merged in the subtle body hiranyagarbha is the collective form of these jivas as vaishvanara is such form of the jiva in the waking state the third state is that of shushupti or the dreamless sleep where manas itself is withdrawn and buddhi dominated by tamas preserves only the notion which is happily i slept i was not conscious of anything patanjali yoga sutra mein ye quote hai in the macrocosm the in the in the macrocosm the upadhi of these states are also called virat hiranyagarbha and avyakta the description of the state of sleep is given in the shiva sutra as that in which there is incapacity of discrimination and incapacity uh, and or there is illusion by the saying cited from the patanjali sutra sutra three modifications of avidya are indicated vis-a-vis ignorance egoism and happiness sound sleep is that in which these three exist okay ignorance egoism and happiness the person in that state is termed pragya his individuality being merged in the causal body in the karana sharir since in the sleeping state the pragya becomes pragya becomes brahman he is no longer jiva as before but the jiva is then not the supreme one not not paramatma because the state is associated with avidya okay hence because the vehicle is the jiva in the sleeping state is hence because the vehicle in the jiva in the sleeping state is karana the vehicle of the jiva in the fourth uh, fourth state is declared to be mahakarana ishvara is the collective form of the pragya jiva <sighs> hiranya garbha hiranya kashipu uh, hiranya something missing my name uh, hiran yeah hiranya reta say also hiran means uh, dear i guess in your case and i think hiran hiranya also means golden i don't think your name means golden right your name probably means dear i might be wrong beyond shushupti is the turiya and beyond turiya the transcendent fifth state without name in the fourth state shuddha vidya is required and this is the only realistic one for the yogi which he attains through samadhi yoga jiva in turiya is merged in the great causal body mahakarana the fifth state arises from firmness in the fourth he who is in this state becomes equal to shiva or more strictly tends to a close equality for it is only beyond that that the spotless one attains the highest equality which is unity spotless one spotless one in this case would probably mean anagha which is an- another name for shiva hence even in the fourth and fifth states there is an absence of full perfection which constitutes the supreme um, bhaskara bhaskara raya in his commentary on the lalita when pointing out that the tantric theory adds the fourth and fifth states to the first three adopted by the followers of the upanishads says that the latter states are not separately enumerated by them because of the absence in those two states of the full perfection of jiva or of shiva now the uh, nadi in bengali we call it nadi also the the channels or the veins not exactly literally veins in in bengali when we say nadi it means literally the veins but these are uh more uh, from the spiritual and and metaphysical uh, perspective it is said that there are 3 uh, th- and a half crores of nadis in the human body of which some are gross and some are subtle uh, nadi means a nerve or artery in the ordinary sense but all the nadis of which the books on yoga speak are not of this physical character but are subtle channels of energy right of these nadis the principal are 14 and of these 14 ida pingala Sushumna are the chief and again of these three Sushumna is the greatest and to it all others are subordinate Sushu- Sushumna is in the hollow of the meru in the cerebro cerebrospinal axis it extends from the muladhara lotus uh, the uh, the tatvik earth center 
to the cerebral region. Sushumna is in the form of fire, Vanni Swarupa, and has within it the Vajrini Vajrini Nadi in the form of the sun, Surya Swarupa, Surya Swarupa. Within the latter is the pale nectar dropping Chitra or Chitrini Nadi, which is also called Brahma Nadi, in the form of the moon, Chandra Swarupa. Sushumna is thus Triguna. The various lotuses in the different chakras of the body. Uh, are all suspended from the chitra nadi uh, chitra nadi the chakras being described as knots in the nadi which is as thin as the thousandth part of a hair outside the meru and on each side of the su- sushumna are the nadis ida and pingala ida is on the left side and coiling round sushumna has its exit in the left nostril pingala is on the right and similarly coiling enters the right nostril the sushumna interlacing ida and pingala and the agya chakra round which they pass thus form a representation of the uh, caduceus of mercury ida is of a pale color is moon like chandra swarupa and contains nectar pingala is red and is sun like surya swarupa containing venom the fluid of mortality these three rivers which are united at the agya chakra flow separately from that point and for this reason the agya chakra is called mukta triveni muladhara is called yukta or united triveni y- yukta triveni since it is the meeting place of the three nadis which are also called ganga or ida yamuna pingala and saraswati the which is the sushumna after the three sacred rivers named after the three sacred rivers of india the opening at the end of the sushumna in the muladhara is called brahmadwara which is closed by the coils of the sleeping devi kundalini now the chakras there are six chakras or dynamic uh, tatvik centers in the body vis-a-vis the muladhara swadhisthana manipura anahata vishuddha and agya which are described in the following notes overall these uh, overall there is uh, these is the thousand petal overall these is the thousand petal lotus sahasrara padma <sighs> okay now uh, we will get into the specific uh, chakras first muladhara wait my towel is slip- slipping muladhara is a triangular space in the midmost portion of the body wow i'm getting a revision of everything i read in history <laughs> sri vigyan bharat tantra not everything some of the more significant parts muladhara is a triangular space in the midmost portion of the body with the apex turned downwards like a young girl's yoni It is described as a red lotus of four petals situated between the base of the sexual organ and the anus. Earth evolved from water is the tatva of the chakra. On the four petals are the four golden varnas: vam, sam, sam and sam. Sham and sam. In the four petals pointed towards the four directions, ishana etc are the four forms of bliss: yogananda, paramananda, uh, sahajananda, and virananda in the uh, in the center of this lotus is swayambhulinga ruddy brown like the color of a young leaf chitrini nadi is figured as a tube and the opening at its end at the base of the linga is called the door of brahman uh, brahmadwara through which the devi ascends the lotus linga and brahmadwara hang downwards the devi kundalini more subtle than the fiber of more subtle than the fiber of the lotus and luminous as lightning lies asleep coiled like a serpent around the linga and closes with her body the door of brahman the devi has forms in the brahman brahmanda her subtlest form in the in the uh, pindanda or body is called kundalini a form of prakriti pervading supporting and expressed in the form of the whole universe the glittering dancer as the sarada sharada tilak calls her in the lotus like head of the yogi when awakened it is she who gives birth to the world made of mantra a red fiery triangle surrounds swayambhulinga and within the triangle is the red kandarpa vayu or air of kama or form of the apana vayu for here is the seat of creative desire outside the triangle is a yellow square called the prithvi earth mandala prithvi mandala to which is attached the eight thunders ashtavajra here is the here is the bija lam lam and with it 
Prithvi on the back of an element. On the on the back of an element, elephant. Prithvi on the back of an elephant. Here also are Brahma and Savitri and the red four-handed Shakti Dakini. Next, Swadhisthana Chakra. Swadhisthana is a six-petaled lotus at the base of the sexual organ, above Muladhara and below the navel. Its pericarp is red and its petals are like lightning. Water evolved from fire is the tattva of this chakra. The varnas on the petals are bum, uh, bham, mum, yam, ram and lam. In the six petals are also the vrittis, which are the states, qualities, functions or inclinations, namely uh, prasraya, credulity, vishwasa, uh, av avishwasa, okay, prasraya, avishwasa, we all know what it means, uh, suspicion, mistrust, etc. Uh, avagya, disdain, murcha, delusion, murcha, delusion, okay. Uh, so the first three words are exactly how, are how they are meant in Bengali as well, uh, prasraya, avishwasa and uh, and avagya but murcha in bengali means uh, basically fainting sort of um, or being too surprised but actually in sanskrit murcha means delusion or of some say disinclination sarvanasha false knowledge and krudata pitilessness yeah that's also how we mean it in bengali as well krurta in in hindi and all etc or all indian languages within a semicircular space in the pericarp are the devata the dark blue mahavishnu Mahalakshmi and Saraswati. In front is the blue four-handed Rakini, Rakini Shakti and the Bija of Varuna, Lord of Water or Vam. Inside the Bija, there is the region of Varuna or the shape of an half moon and in it is Varuna himself seated on a white alligator, Makara. Manipura Chakra. Manipura Chakra is a ten-petaled golden lotus situated above the last in the region of the navel. Fire evolved from air is the tattva of the chakra. Fire which evolved from air. That is the tattva of this spe specific chakra, Manipura Chakra. The ten petals are of the colors of a cloud and on them are the blue varnas. Dham, dham, nam, tam, tham, dham, dham, Nam, Palm, Pham and the 10 Vrittis namely uh, Lajja, uh, Pishunata, Fickleness, uh, Irsha, Jealousy of course, Trishna, Desire, Shushupti, Laziness, Vishada, Sadness, Kasaya, Kashaya, Dullness, Moha, Ignorance, Grina, Aversion and Disgust, Bhaya, Fear. Within the pericarp is the Bija. Bijaram and a triangular figure Mandala of Agni, Lord of Fire, to each side of which which figure are attached three auspicious signs or sat, uh, swastikas. Agni, red, four-handed and seated on a ra ram is within the figure. In front of him are Rudra and his Shakti Bhadrakali. Rudra is of the color of vermilion and is old. His body is smeared with ashes. Bhasma Dhulita Vigraha. That's not mentioned here. I was just showing off. He has three eyes and two hands. With, uh, with one of these, he makes the sign which grants boons and blessings. And with the other, that which dispels fear. Near him is the four-armed uh, Lakini Shakti of the color of molten gold, Tapta Kanchana, wearing yellow raiments and ornaments. Her mind is maddened with passion, Madamatta Chitta, Above the lotus is the abode and region of Surya. The solar region drinks the nectar which drops from the region of the moon. Now Anahata Chakra. Anahata Chakra is a deep red lotus of 12 petals situated above the last and in the region of the heart which is to be distinguished from the heart lotus facing upwards of 8 petals spoken of in the text where the patron deity Ishtadevta is meditated upon. Air evolved from ether is the tattva of the former lotus. On the twelve petals are the vermilion varnas. Kam, kham, gam, gham, nam, 
चम छम जम झम नम तम थम एंड द ट्वेल्व वृत्तीज नेमली आशा होप चिंता केयर एंगजाइटी चेष्टा एंडेवर ममता ऑल दीज आर बेंगोली वर्ड्स ममता सेंस ऑफ माइंडनेस दम्भ एरोगेंस और हिपोक्रेसी विकलता लैंगर अहंकारा कंसीट विवेक डिस्क्रिमिनेशन लोलता कवेटसनेस कपटका डुप्लिसिटी वितर्क इंडिसिशन अनुताप रिग्रेट अ ट्राइंगुलर मंडल विद इन द पेरिकार्प ऑफ दिस लोटस ऑफ द लस्टर ऑफ लाइटनिंग इज नोन एज द त्रिकोण शक्ति विद इन दिस मंडला इज अ रेड बानलिंग कॉल्ड नारायणा और हिरण्य गर्भ एंड नियर इट ईश्वरा एंड हिज शक्ति भुवनेश्वरी ईश्वरा हु इज द ओवर लॉर्ड ऑफ द फर्स्ट थ्री चक्रज इज ऑफ द कलर ऑफ मोल्टन गोल्ड एंड विथ हिज टू हैंड्स ग्रांड्स ब्लेसिंग्स एंड डिस्पेल्स फियर नियर हिम इज द थ्री आइड काकिनी शक्ति लस्ट्रस एंड एज लस्ट्रस एज लाइटनिंग विथ फोर हैंड्स होल्डिंग द न्यूज एंड ड्रिंकिंग कप एंड मेकिंग द साइन ऑफ ब्लेसिंग and that which dispels fear she wears a garland of human bones she is excited and her heart is softened with wine here also are several other shaktis such as kalaratri as also the bija of air vayu or yam inside the lotus is a six cornered smoke colored mandala and the circular region of smoke colored vayu who is seated on a black antelope here too is the embodied atma jivatma like the tapering flame of a lamp now vishuddha chakra or bharatishthana abode of the devi of speech this is above the last and at the lower end of the throat kanthamala the tatva of this chakra is ether akasha the lotus is of a smoky color or the color of fire seen through smoke it has 16 petals which carry the red vowels Um, um, im, im, um, um, rim, rim, lim, lim, m, im, om, um, a. Uh. The seven musical notes: Nishada, Rishabha, Gandhara, uh, Sadhya, Madhyama, Dhaivata, and Panchama. Ni re ga sa ma dha pa. Vinom in the Eighth petal, and uh, the bijas hum, phat, vasat, vasat, swadha, swaha, nama, and in the sixteenth petal, nectar, amrita. In the pericarp is a triangular region within which is the androgen Shiva, known as Ardha Narishvara. There also are the regions of the full moon and ether with its uh, bija hum, with its bija hum. The Akasha mandala is transparent and round in shape. Akasha himself is here dressed in white and mounted on a white elephant. He has four hands which hold the noose, paya, the elephant hook, ankusha, and with the other he makes the mudras which grant blessing and dispel fear. Shiva is white with five faces, three eyes, 10 arms and is dressed in tiger skins. Near him is the white Shakti Shakini dressed in yellow raiments holding in her four hands the bow. the arrow the noose and the hook above the chakra at the root of the palate the talumula is a concealed chakra called lalana lalana in some, and, and in some tantras is also known as kala chakra it is a red lotus with 12 petals bearing the following vrittis shraddha faith santosha contentment aparadha sense of error dama self command mana anger sneha affection shoka sorrow grief kheda dejection shuddhata purity arati detach, detachment sambhrama agitation urmi appetite or desire now the agya chakra agya chakra is also called uh, paramakula and mukta triveni since it is from here that the three nadis ida pingala and sushumna get their go their separate ways from the agya chakra it is a two petaled lotus situated between the two eyebrows in this chakra there is no gross tatva but the subtle tatva mind is here hakar ardha or half the letter ha is 
हकारार्थ सो हाफ ऑफ द ह और हाफ द लेटर ह इज ऑल्सो देर ऑन इट्स पेटल्स आर द रेड वर्नर्स हम एंड क्षम इन द पेरिकार्प इज कंसील्ड द बीजा ओम इन द टू पेटल्स एंड द पेरिकार्प देर आर द थ्री गुणर्स सात्व राजा संतमस विद इन द ट्राइंगुलर मंडला इज द पेरिका इन द पेरिकाप देर इज द लस्ट्रस तेजो माया लिंग इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द प्राणव और प्राणव कृति विच इज कॉल्ड इतर इतर पराशिवा इन द फॉर्म ऑफ हमसा और हमस रूपा इज ऑल्सो देयर विथ हिज शक्ति सिद्ध काली इन द थ्री कॉर्नर्स ऑफ द ट्राइंगल आर ब्रह्मा विष्णु एंड महेश्वरा रिस्पेक्टिवली इन दिस चक्र देर इज द वाइट हाकिनी शक्ति विथ सिक्स हेड्स एंड फोर हैंड्स इन विच आर ज्ञान मुद्रा अ स्कल अ ड्रम और डमरू एंड रोजरी सो विच इज अ रुद्राक्ष नाउ द सहस्रड पद्म अब ऑफ द अज्ञा चक्र देर इज अनदर सीक्रेट चक्र कॉल्ड मानस चक्र इट इज अ लोटस ऑफ सिक्स पेटल्स ऑन विच आर शब्द ज्ञान स्पर्श ज्ञान रूप ज्ञान आघ्रन आघ्र नोपलभि रसोप रसोप भोगा एंड स्वप्न और द फैकल्टीज ऑफ हियरिंग टच साइट स्मेल टेस्ट एंड स्लीप आघ्र नोप आघ्र आघ्र नो आघ्र नोपलभि ओके दिस दिस वर्ड आई हर्ड फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम फैकल्टीज ऑफ हियरिंग टच साइट स्मेल टेस्ट एंड स्लीप और द एबसेंस ऑफ दीज ओके अब ऑफ दिस अगेन देर इज अनदर सीक्रेट चक्र कॉल्ड सोमा चक्र इट इज अ लोटस ऑफ सिक्सटीन पेटल्स विच आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड सिक्सटीन कालाज सिक्सटीन कलाज दीज कलाज आर कॉल्ड कृपा मर्सी मैदूता जेंटलनेस धैर्य पेशेंस वैराग्य डिस्पैशन और डिटैचमेंट धृति कॉन्स्टेंसी संपत प्रॉस्पेरिटी हास्य चेयरफुलनेस रोमांच रैप्चर और थ्रिल विनय सेंस ऑफ प्रोपराइटी ह्यूमिलिटी ध्यान मेडिटेशन सुस्थिरता क्वाइटिट्यूड रेस्टफुलनेस गांभीर्य ग्रेविटी उद्यमा एंटरप्राइज एंड एफर्ट इनिशिएटिव अक्षोभा इमोशनलेसनेस औदर्य मैग्नेमिटी एंड एकाग्रता कॉन्सेंट्रेशन अब ऑफ दिस लास्ट चक्र इज द हाउस विदाउट सपोर्ट निरालंबपुरी वेर योगी सी द रेडियंट ईश्वरा अब ऑफ दिस इज द प्राणव शाइनिंग लाइक अ फ्लेम एंड अब ऑफ प्राणव द वाइट क्रीसेंट नाद एंड अब ऑफ दिस द लास्ट पॉइंट बिंदु देर इज देन अ वाइट लोटस ऑफ ट्वेल्व पेटल्स विथ इट्स हेड अपवर्ड्स एंड ओवर दिस लोटस देर इज द ओशन ऑफ नेक्टार सुधा सागरा सुधा सागरा द आईलैंड ऑफ जेम्स मनी द्वीपा द ऑल्टर ऑफ जेम्स मनी पीठ द फॉर्क लाइटनिंग लाइक लाइन्स अ क थ एंड देर इन नाड नाद एंड बिंदु ऑन नाद एंड बिंदु एज एन ऑल्टर देर इज द परम हंस and the latter serves as an altar for the feet of the guru there the guru of all should be meditated the body of the hamsa on which the feet of the guru rests is gyana maya the wings agama and nigama the two feet shiva and shakti the beak pranava the eyes and throat kama and kala those to the thousand petal lotus close to the thousand petal lotus is the 16th digit of the moon which is called amakala which is pure red and lustrous like lightning as fine as a fiber of the lotus hanging downwards receptacle of the lunar nectar lunar nectar lunar nectar in it is the crescent nirvana kala luminous as the sun and finer than the thousandth part of a hair this is the ishta devta of all near nirvana kala is parama nirvana shakti infinitely subtle lustrous as the sun creatrix of tatva gyana above it are bindu and visarga shakti root and abode of all bliss sahasrada padma or thousand petal lotus of all colors hangs with its head downwards from the brahma randra above all the chakras this is the region of the first cause brahma loka the cause of the six preceding causes it is the great sun both cosmically and individually in whose effulgence parama shiva and adya shakti reside the power is the vachaka shakti or saguna brahman holding potentially within itself the gunas powers and planes the different realms 
Param Shiva is in the form of the great ether, Paramakasha Rupi, the Supreme Spirit, Paramatma, the son of the darkness of ignorance. In each of the petals of the lotus are placed all the letters of the alphabet. And whatever there is in the lower chakra or in the universe, Brahmanda, exists, he, exists here in potential state, Avyakta Bhava. Shaivas call this place Shivasthana, Shivasthana. Vaishnavas call it Paramapurusha. Shaktas call it Devisthana. Uh, and the Samkhya sages call it Prakriti Purusha Sthana. Others call it by other names, such as Hariharasthana, Shakti Sthana, Parama Brahma, Parama Hamsa, uh, Parama Jyoti, Kula Sthana, and Parama Shiva Akula. Parama Shiva Akula. But whatever the name, all speak of the same. Uh, next chapter is called the Three Temperaments. This is from where we will start the next day. We read a lot today. Wow. We did 57 pages already. If I had slept a little more, I would have finished the book entirely today. How many pages total? 153 pages. I think it will take two more days then. Or, or if the next day I am well slept, then we will finish the entire book the next live stream. Okay then, let me check some comments and then I will we'll go offline. Neener, what did you post? <laughs> Why is YouTube randomly destroying your comments? How to see these chakras? Are they, are, they, are they conceptual epitomes or are they visible in Dhyan? Are they related to the body organs in any way? No, they are not related to the body organs in any way. You have to, uh, you can, you can uh, conceptualize them, conceptualize them through Dhyana. Uh, but the diagrams are given in the Sri Vigyan Bhairav Tantra, so it's easy to imagine at least. Uh, nothing uh, was my favorite other than Santosh Mitra. And now clueless Bengali Hindus are fighting who is better or greater between Ram and Durga. <laughs> That's why we don't get anywhere easily. Uh, here to learn seems like I seriously have some extremely interesting stuff for you since you are Bengal Hindu. Hmm. The descriptions of chakras are very abstract. Yeah, because this is a very rough uh, top top view of the entire concept. No, the details are all in the Sri Vigyan Bhairav Tantra. Okay then, no more comments then guys. So I'll go offline now. Hopefully I'll come online tomorrow night as well. Good night then. Thank you for joining the live stream.